There's an important lesson in all these Democrats wishing Trump a speedy recovery. Notes from the Edge of the Narrative Matrix. All the high-profile Democrats who've been wishing Trump a speedy recovery from his assassination attempt after years of calling him an existential threat are the same people who now treat George W. Bush like a cuddly wuddly snuggle poo after years of calling him an evil dictator. The enmity between these factions is a performance, like cage fighters who hug warmly after weeks of trash talk once their match is over, and admit that all the drama was really just about promoting the fight and selling pay-per-views. Their actions show you that their conflicts are fake, and they are no more enemies than actors on the stage are enemies. So why should you treat their performance as real? Why buy into the drama of their pretend elections and feigned opposition when they themselves do not? They're showing you it's all fake. Believe them. The two sides of mainstream politics are not fighting against one another. They're only fighting against you. Their only job is to keep you clapping along with the two-handed puppet show as they rob you blind and tighten your chains while your gaze is fixed on the performance. Here's a tweet from President Biden. There's no place in America for this kind of violence or any violence. An assassination attempt is contrary to everything we stand for as a nation. It's not America and we can't allow this to happen. Tweet from Vice President Kamala Harris. I have been briefed on the shooting at former President Trump's event in Pennsylvania. Doug and I are relieved that he is not seriously injured. We are praying for him, his family, and all those who have been injured and impacted by this senseless shooting. Tweet from Barack Obama. There is absolutely no place for political violence in our democracy. And though we still don't know exactly what happened, we should all be relieved that former President Trump wasn't seriously hurt. All of Trump's Democratic Party well-wishers prove that for all the whining in recent years about the death of decorum and how vitriolic U.S. partisan feuding has become, they really are all buddies who only pretend to believe the other side is an existential threat to the world. In Washington, they're all on the same team and have generally cordial relationships with people on the other side of the aisle. They just encourage normal Americans to feed all their discontent with the status quo into a hyper-emotional political environment where the barely existing divisions between the two major factions are inflamed by mainstream pundits and politicians so that their anger will go toward the completely ineffectual activity of voting instead of more direct and revolutionary measures. From the perspective of the empire managers, its hostile partisan rage for the amicable cocktail party relations for we. Every single day in Gaza since October 7th has been more outrageous, significant, and newsworthy than Trump getting a boo-boo on his ear. I've been getting a lot of shrill, hysterical comments from Americans insisting that it's somehow outrageous and inappropriate for me to use this political moment to highlight the criminality of the U.S. empire as I do every day using every opportunity I can. I would like to make it clear that I have no respect for this. Less than zero respect. The emotional hysteria we are seeing around the assassination attempt on Trump is very similar to what we saw around 9-11 on October 7th which historically means some deeply unwholesome policies are about to be rolled out by the managers of the empire. Now is the time to be more critical of the imperial power structure, not less. If you find it horrifying and evil that I am using Trump's ear owie to talk about exponentially more atrocious acts of violence, I can only say, get a fucking grip. Pull yourself together. Your country is backing a literal genocide right this very moment. Stop getting swept up in the media-driven emotional frenzy of the moment, get a hold of yourself, stop thinking uncritically, and start acting like an adult. The Zionist Federation of Australia is trying to have an Australian journalist prosecuted for unlawful criticism of Israel. Yes, you heard that correctly, and yes, that is the actual story here. The CEO of the Zionist Federation of Australia, Alon Kasuto, is trying to bring a Human Rights Commission case against renowned former SBS broadcaster Mary Kostakidis for tweeting criticisms of Israel in ways Kasuto claims violate Australian hate speech laws, 
specifically sharing a speech by Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah, wherein he says the words, From the river to the sea, the land of Palestine is for the Palestinian people and the Palestinian people only. This comes just days after the Australian government appointed its first anti-Semitism envoy, a move many have feared would lead to crackdowns on speech that is critical of Israel. I really cannot overstate how crazy and evil this is. This is probably a good time to once again share my periodic reminder that Australia has no Bill of Rights, and it shows.